before leaving this topic of, uh, you know, local therapy and, and actually beyond just innovative new drug approaches uh, or biologic approaches, um, you know, I've, I've been fascinated to watch over the past five years with the introduction of new effective systemic therapies, the way that radiation therapy and even surgery um, are really being reevaluated in terms of their role in metastatic patients. There's actually some you know, new data um, to consider, I suppose, for surgery, even uh, in surgical approaches uh, for patients with earlier stage disease. But I wanted to focus a little bit on radiation therapy, kind of pivoting a little bit from this you know, injectable lesion concept to radiation as a, um, an adjunct to systemic therapy. This has been particularly popular in terms of uh, immune therapy. So Jason, what's your, what's your current take of you know, sort of emerging data um, and, and I guess current clinical practice considerations in terms of, you know, weaving radiation therapy uh, into a patient's management? So I think it's a two-fold, two-pronged approach. I think one is uh, we have highly effective therapies now, but radiation, directed radiation to a lesion that's symptomatic is also highly effective. And so the question becomes, is that palliative approach useful? And then is there more beyond that? Because as you're alluding to, there's pretty good preclinical data suggesting that you can actually get distant effects, some distant effects with radiation, with upregulation of other immune molecules like PDL1, perhaps that has the potential to augment you know, the activity of other immunotherapy. So certainly in my practice, I don't necessarily go around looking for lesions mm -hmm. that I want to radiate, mm -hmm. but if it comes up that a patient has a symptomatic lesion, I certainly don't hesitate to say I'm gonna add radiation to that lesion, both palliatively, mm -hmm. as well as hopefully to sort of amplify an immune response that's already ongoing. I would say also in the context of targeted therapies, we've sort of, we've, we've learned as well that patients can have disease control at sites and then lose that in only certain Right. parts of the body, and right. certainly that's where a palliative approach to get that lesion, and you still retain the benefit of the targeted therapy, I think is also highly effective. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, Renee, with, there's trials ongoing, of course, investigating immune checkpoint antibody therapy with radiation to try to understand how you know, reproducible uh, the, uh, an effect there might be in terms of you know, systemic impact. Um, absent that data, because we still don't, we don't really have rigorous data, um, do you feel comfortable giving radiation therapy during the course of immune checkpoint antibody treatment, be it CTLA-4, PD-1 monotherapy, or even combination treatment? Yeah, I, I've done that before, and yes, and I agree with everything Jason said. I think another thing that's possibly contributing to drive this is just the greater availability of, of better technology for radiation, the stereotactic radiation, you know, that started in the brain. So in the brain, I think it's a, it's a, certainly a critical thing. But now that's more widely applicable in the body, and, and I, I think that kind of radiation might be beneficial. I, I was a little bit surprised today to see a poster, I think it was from Australia at the SMR meeting, about, uh, it was a retrospective look at, at the, the abscopal effect. My sense of it mm -hmm. was that it's not very common. Right. Um, and they, at least the, I don't remember the details of the poster, but they were suggesting as, as high as 50%. Yeah. Uh, it, it didn't, it seemed high. Right. I, I'd be interested in getting a sense from. Yeah, well, Jeff, maybe, again, for this audience, might be useful to kind of visit this issue of, you know, how, how is it or why is it that, that people would think that radiation and the type of effect it has on tumor cells could be potentiating to the immune system in a systemic way? Well, there's a long history to the so-called abscopal effect, which is, I guess you could define it as a scenario where you deliver a local therapy that causes local destruction of tumor, and at some point, subsequently, there's a systemic, a systemic effect where you have regression of distant disease. There was an article in the New England Journal, I think it was 2012, mm -hmm where Michael Pastow and Jed Walchok's group published a case, a very interesting case, of a person who had obvious progression in multiple lesions on ipilimumab on a clinical trial. I forget the dose. I think it was probably around one or three mg per kilogram, who then had a growing painful pleural-based lesion that was posterior, so it was invading into the ribs. And a reasonable choice to locally radiate it, probably with conformal radiation of some sort, and thereafter, it appeared in, this, uh, in the timeline that the tumors distantly in other locations began to shrink in the absence of further ipilimumab, although if you look carefully at the timeline, ipi was given very close to the time mm -hmm. of the radiation mm -hmm. subsequently. So could this have been a late ipi response? Probably not. I think this was a true case of an abscopal effect. That is, the, in the absence of further systemic treatment, the ipilimumab, the active radiation therapy to one isolated lesion caused an immune response which induced regression distantly. Mm 
which was then amplified because the investigators realized what was happening and said, oh, let's continue the mm -hmm, map. Mm -hmm. And I think we agree, looking at the scans and all the data from that article in the New England Journal, there was progressive disease mm -hmm. beforehand that occurred six months to a year after starting therapy. I was once at a meeting of melanoma docs, and there must have been 100 docs in the room, and I said, could people raise their hands if they've ever seen an example of this abscopal mm. effect where radiation in the face of no other systemic therapy induced a systemic response in right. someone who had had ipilimumab. And I think I had one hand out of about oh, 80, patient, yeah. 80 physicians yeah. describing yeah. one patient. Right. I personally would be hard pressed to describe in any patient I've treated with Ipi or Nevo or Pembro uh, a true abscopal effect. Mm. I think Renee is right. It's a real but relatively rare phenomenon. I have seen bona fide data in breast cancer where IPI has no real activity, and I've been shown this by colleagues at NYU, where there was a PET scan where there was clear-cut progression of breast disease, there was radiation of a chest wall lesion, and regression of liver disease subsequently. Mm. It doesn't happen with IPI. Yeah. So I, I really yeah. buy into that. How often it occurs is unclear to me. Yeah. And at one point after the Pastow article was published, everybody was going nuts, deliberately stereotactically right. treating every brain met in sight, <laughs> then giving them IPI. And, and I guess I, I would really definitely jump in to sort of second that to say, like, this is not a clinical, like, algorithm, right. right? If it comes up to radiate the patient, that's palliative, and if you get such an effect, that's great. But the idea that we would, should be doing this prospectively, I think, should, is that's not how we should be thinking. And it has been looked at. Uh, you, I'm not sure if it was the best conceived study. There was a prostate study with IPI and radiation, and it wasn't obvious that there was any abscopal effect at all because the IPI didn't really add to the effect of the radiation. You figure if IPI with radiation together were included, you would get some abscopal effect, which would promote the activity of IPI in prostate cancer, which you really didn't see in that randomized study. So that was kind of a, 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 a minus for the abscopal effect. And the other point worth making is that with ipilimumab, in patients who've had stereotactic radiosurgery, it is my feeling, based on my discussions with my neurosurgical colleagues at my institution and elsewhere, that there is a late inflammatory effect in the brain causing radiation necrosis way beyond what you would expect with radiation necrosis, which typically is six to 12 months after stereotactic. We have seen it two to three years later in patients who had abnormalities, abnormal uptake on an MRI in the area of previously radiated tumor. And when they, and they would develop serious symptoms with cerebral edema. And when they came to surgery, because the surgeons assumed they had progressive disease, which required debulking, no tumor, right. radiation necrosis. Radiation necrosis three years later, I could see it happening once or twice, but we probably have assembled a half dozen cases at my institution. Uh, no, the yeah. And what they have in common is they've all had IPI or IPI nevo right. and preceded by stereotactic radiosurgery, or in some cases, in the midst of treatment, they got one lesion SRS. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that I have encouraged my neurosurgical colleagues to write up. Perhaps you all in your institutions have seen this too. Yeah. But it, it, it should generate a little bit of caution in interpreting an MRI scan in a patient who's had stereotactic radiosurgery who's also had IPI or IPI with Nevo. Right. So, Jason, this